Hello, everyone. My name is Jennifer Hancock, and I am the founder of Humanist Learning Systems, who is the education partner for the International Humanistic Management Associations uh, on this the Humanistic Professionals Lunch and Learn. I am also the vice president of the USA chapter of the International Humanistic Management Association, and I want to welcome you to today's Lunch and Learn. Um, I also want to introduce my guest, my co-host, Elizabeth Castillo. Hello, Elizabeth. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm Elizabeth. I'm over at uh, Arizona State University in Phoenix, um, and I'm Assistant Professor of Organizational Leadership and also the um, Secretary of the U.S. Chapter of International Humanistic Management Association. Welcome. Thank you. So our topic today is diversity from a system standpoint, and we have with us Lisa Tabor, and I think you're really going to like her. She is a she is passionate about systemizing diversity, equity and inclusion. She wants to see a world where all organizations deliver quality service and great results to all stakeholders all the time, regardless of race, ethnicity or culture, a world where a philosophy of mutual benefit and success is part of every organization's DNA. She's the owner and president of Culture Brokers. And she taps this passion to help big and small government, nonprofit and business organizations execute behaviors that effectively meet the needs of culturally diverse customers, employees, suppliers, and communities. For more than 15 years, her company has consulted on a variety of cultural diversity, inclusion, and racial equity projects related to key functions in governance, strategy, finance, marketing, research and development, information technology, customer service, human resources, community engagement, procurement, space design, and operations. She's very impressive. Lisa, welcome and thanks for accepting our invitation. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be in front of this group. I had never heard of humanist learning systems before I got an invitation from Jennifer. And um, I, I was uh, really enjoying learning a little bit more. I, I certainly don't know enough. Uh, and I hope that you will help me understand it better too. But um, what I'm gathering is that you're applying a humanist perspective, right, to especially the work you're doing with organizations. And I think that that there is um, a, a really nice synergy between um, what we do at Culture Brokers focusing on uh, structural improvement, structural influences on results, as well as what you're doing in your work as, as humanists and humanistic management. So um, I am uh, eager to get, dive in. I am told I have 15 minutes to present, which is absolutely perfect, um, and then 45, a good 45 minutes or so for questions, which I, I actually really prefer to do more of a Q&A anyway. So I'm just going to share my screen and run through a, an introduction. I hope to answer many of the questions that were provided, that you provided, um, but I know I'm not going to hit them all. So uh, hopefully that 45 minutes will help to, to hit some of your questions. Um, we're going to, uh, I want to ground everyone, I guess, into in this, um, the concept of equity, especially, yes, we're going to be talking about diversity. But we, we at culture brokers are really interested in outcomes. Diversity is one component that we need in order to get to um, equitable outcomes. And this is a very uh, popular chart or graphic image. Um, that is a great metaphor for some of these um, large terms that, that tend to be a little wonky, maybe a little hard to understand. Um, and I offer this as a way of um, expressing how both I personally and culture brokers as a company think about these situations, the situation that we have today in reality, and frankly, the situation our country was built on, which was to provide resources to some, and in fact, um, take resources away from others into um, a, a um, relatively recent um, you know, recent circumstance of thinking about equality, where we think that everyone should be equal. We've tried to build 
um, in the last 60 years or so, we try to build systems that would give everybody the same thing, but still does not result in, in the same outcomes for everyone. To a point now in the last, you know, maybe 10, 15 years, um, for those of us who have been in the industry for a while, but for, for society, maybe only in the last five to six years has this word equity cropped up and the idea that everyone, what we want is everyone to have the same outcomes, these great positive outcomes. And in order to get there, we have to give people different things, or, you know, we have to um, help help recognize what people, the circumstances people come to life with, come to our workplaces with, and ensure that they are given what they need to succeed. And then finally, um, I think justice, liberation, this concept of why do we have to have barriers at all uh, in, in, in ensuring that people get to the same kinds of outcomes. That's what I built my organization on. And um, we've been working, as we said, for 16 years now trying to get that to happen. Um, when we when when we're talking about systems, I said, you know, going back here to this, this these outcomes that we see uh, and the the concepts that we're trying to get to as um, as our society evolves the concepts of equity and liberation those only happen because sorry those only happen because of systems and systems are all of these processes and relationships that interact um, and um, they interact under a set of rules and they work in, under those rules to deliver what Wikipedia says is a unified whole, but what we consider to be the results. So those results of inequities in housing and economic development and wealth building and education are the result of a lot of different systems working together, a lot of processes, a lot of institutions, frankly, working together to make that happen. So assist, the, the concept of um, thinking about these things as a systems problem is really important because they are system problems and trying to come at solving a problem from with one process or from one institution is not going to help and clearly it hasn't even with multiples so what we are what what we see is if you can understand the system um, that has created these results um, that shows up both at all sorts of levels like a fractal right it shows up in your um obviously out in society but you know your society is part of, or excuse me your organization is part of society so it shows up in your organization it shows up in your relationships with others it shows up in your family and we it can even show up in your personal life in other ways so it's really helpful to be able to recognize what's happening in systems so that you can in, in systems at all levels, especially as it applies to your organization. So you're going to be seeing um, themes show up regularly. Uh, we've we've come together to um, answer the question about how in organizations then we can examine these systems and see how they're playing out and how to change them. What kinds of policies, processes, um, built environments can you put into place that help you understand these concepts of diversity, inclusion, and equity so that you can actually make a difference. Even if you can't make a difference in society, you can make a difference in your organization. And um, because your organization is part of society, you can start to have influence on what's happening out in the world. Uh, I wanna take a moment and um, and define equity for you. This is our definition of equity, and we are very clear about how we define that. And that is those performance results that do not vary across racial and ethnic groups. Um, we are looking for data. We're looking for measurement. That picture I showed you of the three boys that were looking over the fence, that's the performance result. That's the outcome that we wanna see does not 
differ. In order to get to those outcomes, we need to look, at, or excuse me, in order to um, identify what those outcomes are, they're, they are encompassing of things like opportunity, accessibility, quality of your products and services. If they vary, do they vary across different groups? And then why? What is it that's that's um, that's uh, driving that variation? And that's then what you want to be fixing. Are things happening in a fair manner? Um, repair and restoration i.e. there was, has there been damage done and are you fixing it and then how do you restore groups of people once that damage has been done too um, not only did you repair the damage but if there's been long-term damage over time those those groups are not in the same space or in the same um uh, spot as other groups how do you restore what has been lost so equity is an infinite game, right? It's going to go on forever because we not only are we adjusting to our circumstances now, but we will need to adjust to circumstances in the future. So I have these four big ideas uh, that I think are critical for organizations to be really effective in getting these better results and in changing systems the system, in fact, that is creating disparities. Those ideas are to make a public commitment, to leverage structure, the structural influences on behavior, to be disciplined about what you're doing, and to absolutely show those results. That is probably the biggest one, and that's certainly the one that we think is the most important. In making a public commitment, what does that mean? That your organization is, is saying, uh, um, demonstrating that it understands what's wrong with the system, that the system is creating disparities, that the system is not working for everyone and makes a commitment to fix that. Uh, I think I've got a couple of um, examples here of equity statements from some of our clients. Actually, all of these folks are our clients who've created these equity statements. Um, and I will make sure that you get actual copies of this and the resources that I follow up with so you don't have to <laughs> really spend a ton of time trying to, to um, read it. But the point being, again, that the, the company, the organization makes that very public statement about recognizing the situation it's in and committing to doing something about it. That leveraging structure piece is is um, maybe a little different from what you will lean into as humanistic management, right? Humanistic management is about people and is people centered. Our work is about centering structure. It's about centering the organization's policies, practices, and situations first, and then coming in and filling in with individual capacity and building social connections and relationships and interpersonal um, interpersonal relationships. So um, yes, individuals are very important, but if you don't address the structural influences on their behavior, you're missing out on a lot of um, a lot of uh, uh, you know power that can be leveraged to create change. That discipline I found to be um, again one of the most important aspects of actually getting different results from your systems and doing systems change work. So our, we have a theorem that's called the equity theorem, and it really helps us to um, be very discreet about what we mean by diversity, inclusion, and equity, and the fact that discipline is the multiplying factor in getting to those results that we want to see. In fact, in most cases, it's the missing factor because we have seen that while there is diversity in organizations, i.e. there's there's difference that is presence and that is a human condition right we're all different different diversity does exist um, and it exists in different ways but it is there 
inclusion as the behavior, uh, um, the, the activities towards belonging, the activities towards decision making in a co-creative uh, co way, um, all of these interactions are also there. And if you have an organization that is wanting to achieve equity, those results that do not differ, you have to have both of those things in the organization. But that is not enough. You have to also install some discipline, some structure, some rigor, quality, um, you know, delivery of quality, uh, um, getting people to um, observe and to, ch to actually Im uh, implement change, and um, making sure that there, there are these very clear goals that are measurable people know what success looks like they are taking um, the steps they need they're being held accountable all of that needs to be a part of your equation in order to get to those equity results and then finally ultimately you build trust and you build um uh uh you know um What's the word I'm looking for? Uh, people can believe you when you actually show those results. And those results are in fact possible. There are ways to be able to measure different aspects of your organization, your organization's culture, in fact, to determine where are their gaps, where are their strengths, where are their um, weaknesses, what are opportunities for other opportunities for improvement, and then act on those in a disciplined manner and get the results that you say that you want. Those, it is, it is incredibly possible. I've worked with more than a hundred organizations now um, to make that happen across all the different sectors and industries. And in fact, some results are amazing. Uh, one of our clients experienced an increase of staff diversity by 15% that was sustained over time. They um, increased their vet vendor diversity, again, measurably, and they increased their board diversity and was able to sustain that over time. One of our most, um, in, uh, you know, sort of successful, most successful um, clients was were able to reduce the number of kids in detention by 70% in six years. So discipline, <laughs> demonstrate that you have, you can, you demonstrate that you're getting results that is all necessary and powerful but problems do happen along the way right this isn't as simple as i make it seem uh, and i know a lot of you had questions about those problems so i'm going to let our team members jennifer and elizabeth share ask those questions because i'm sure i'm at my 15 or <laughs> or even over um, but before i close i do want to make sure that you know that this is about progress not perfection we will never get there that infinite game we are going to be doing this constantly we have to live into what we're doing we cannot be afraid of a sense of urgency because our communities my community is suffering and we cannot wait for you to be ready Right. So start working now, lean into it, and hopefully I'll answer some questions to help you do that.